Kale, in the last lesson we talked, or we started talking about gathering data, and one way to do that was to run a simulation. Another way to do that is to take a survey. And so to start that discussion, we're going to talk about the difference between a census and a survey. So a population is the group of individuals that you want to find out something about, the entire group. So if we're talking about, um, let's say, everybody that goes to school at Stonewall, the population would be all of the students that attend Stonewall. Sometimes you can get a census. Most of the time, um, that's not really a, a possibility. And so if we can't take a census, then we'll take a sample survey. So let's say we want to find something. Uh, we want to poll the student body here at Stonewall about the discipline procedures uh, that we have. And so our goal is to get a sample of 400 students. And so uh, we're going to talk about the ways to do that. So again, a census would be surveying the entire population. So that would mean we would uh, ask whatever questions we came up with to all of the students here at Stonewall. And whatever values we got, um, concerning those questions, we would call those parameters because um, they're values that represent um, the responses from all of the people in the population. That's probably not realistic, even in uh, a school building, um, because it's just hard to get a hold of all the students here. There's over 2,000 students here. And so what we'd probably do instead is take a sample survey. That means we, we'd get a group, and in this case, we decided we want a group of 400. Um, it's a smaller part of the population. But we want to make sure that it's representative of the population as well. And so then we can take what we learn about that sample and uh, hopefully uh, draw some conclusions about the entire population. And so any values we'd get from a sample survey, we call statistics. Okay, so if we get information from an entire population, that's a parameter. Something from a survey, from a, sa or from a sample, uh, we call a statistic. And so we have to make sure that when we're sampling that we're being thoughtful, and there's some things that we have to be mindful of. The first would be uh, we have to be mindful of what is our population, because our sample has to represent that population. So if we're trying to find something out about all of the students at Stonewall, we probably would want to make sure that everybody is represented. Uh, we want to make sure all ages are represented, probably all uh, ethnicities, um, both uh, male and female, and other things uh, that might affect how students view, um, in this case, discipline. So we want to make sure that our sample is randomized, and we're going to talk a lot about that in a minute. Okay. Remember, uh, when things are random, it means we know what the possible outcomes are, but we just don't know what outcome we're going to get. And so in this case, we know all the people that we could get as part of our sample, but when we do a random sample, we just don't know ahead of time which ones we're going to get. And then we want to be cognizant of our sample size. Um, there's not some predetermined size that we have to have, but we want to make sure that it's large enough. So 400 students from our student body would be a really good sample. We wouldn't want to sample five. And again, we wouldn't want to try and sample 2,000 because then we're, we're getting closer and closer to the entire population. So a sample of around 400 students would be uh, a pretty good deal there. So now we need to make sure that when we get our sample, it is randomized. And so there's several ways to do that. And the first is to do just a simple random sample. So in a simple random sample, we assign everybody in the population a number. And then we randomly generate using a, a numbers table or technology, probably like a calculator or some sort of computer program. We randomly generate the numbers of the people we wanted to survey, and then we'd survey them. So in this case, we could randomly generate 400 student ID numbers, 
and then the students attached to those ID numbers, we would go ahead and survey. Um, sometimes population, uh, there's groups in a population that have a specific characteristic. And students in a high school uh, is the perfect example because you all are grouped based on the year that you started school and the year that you graduate, freshmen, sophomore, junior, seniors. And so what we could do is take a stratified sample that would ensure we get um, a representation of all of those different grade levels. And so what we do is we break the population into those groups and we call them strata when we're doing a stratified sample. Um, and then within each of those groups, so within each of my uh, classes, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, I'll do a simple random sample of 100 students. So again, I'll generate 100 freshman student IDs, 100 sophomores, 100 juniors, 100 seniors, and I'd get a sample of 100 random students from each of those to do my survey with. And that ensures that we have a good representation of our population, where we have somebody from uh, some people from each class. Another way to break into groups is called a cluster sample. And uh, stratified and cluster, those are two that uh, people often confuse, and so it's one that you really want to focus on uh, understanding. Again, we can group into clusters. So in this case, we could group uh, our students by homeroom. And we would call those homerooms clusters. And so we would randomly select homeroom numbers, so generate random homeroom numbers, and then go to those homerooms and survey every student within that within those homerooms. So we'd have to make sure that we'd get enough homerooms to reach our goal of 400. Um, but hopefully that too would give us a representation of the school. Maybe we get some kids who start the day in math, some in science, some in history. Um, just another way to group this, uh, take groups from the population and get samples from those groups. We could also do a systematic sample. So in a systematic sample, we start uh, by generating one random, in this case, one random student number and we'd survey that student, and then we'd go up by some number of uh, digits to select the next student. So let's say we want to, I think in my example, I said every fifth. So we'd generate a student number, survey that student, and then we'd add five to that student number, and, and we would uh, survey that student with that number, add five more, survey that student, add five more. Um, so we're surveying every fifth student. It doesn't have to be every fifth, it could be the 10th or the 20th, um, but we do that until we get 400. And then uh, sometimes people combine methods. In fact, uh, a lot of surveys uh, and sampling methods are multi-stage, some combination of those methods. So uh, we might, I mean, stratified and cluster are sort of inherently multi-stage because you group and then you take a simple random sample. So when you're sampling, you want to avoid some pitfalls, some things that will uh, give you um, a bad sample. And one is when your survey is a voluntary response. Um, oops, sorry about that. Uh, the best example I have of a voluntary response is a Twitter poll or some sort of online poll. So if we were to put our survey on Twitter, then only the people who um, go on Twitter or are interested in following our class on Twitter, only those people would give their responses. It wouldn't be a representative sample of our population. We also wouldn't want to do what's called a convenience sample. And uh, so an example of a convenience sample would be, you know, we don't, we don't want to r randomly generate numbers. We don't want to decide if we want to stratify or cluster. So we'll just stand at the front door at the beginning of school, and we'll just ask the first 400 people we, we see walks through the door. All right, that's not representative of our population either. Maybe there's uh, 
something about a student who got to school early that's not the same as a student who maybe got to school late. So uh, that would be a bad way to sample as well. Also, uh, what we call a bad sampling frame. So the sampling frame is the group of individuals that you have to choose from to get your sample. And so one way we could sample badly uh, using a bad sampling frame, if we want to know something about all the students in the school, would be to only talk to students in one grade level. So if all we could do was get the student numbers of freshmen and sample freshmen, that wouldn't really be a great representation of all of the students because um, based on your age, you might see discipline different. And then last would be if we had something called under coverage. That means we're not reaching the entire population of students. So an example of that would be if we did our survey at the end of the year after the seniors had graduated and all we have are freshmen, sophomores, and juniors in the building. Okay, we would miss an entire group of our students. The last thing to talk about here is bias. Um, there's a couple ways that uh, bias can be introduced. One of them is called a response bias. So that would be where I worded a question or I asked a question in such a way in my survey that I elicited a specific response from the person who I'm asking the question of. So if we phrased a question, hey, isn't the discipline at Stonewall too harsh? Uh, that's sort of like provoking the person to be like, yeah, you know, come to think of it, it is too harsh. Um, we would want to frame that question in some different kind of way. Like, um, how, how do you feel about the discipline at Stonewall? Maybe give them some options. It's fair, it's too lenient, it's too harsh, I don't have an opinion. Okay, something where we're not uh, sort of making them think uh, what we want them to say. We can also have a non-response bias. That means simply people who we ask to do the survey don't respond. So uh, if we were to do something like a telephone poll where we called people, they might just not answer the phone. And so we wouldn't get a response from them. Um, sometimes people mail surveys. And uh, if you're like me, you take those and you uh, recycle them because you don't have the time to fill it out. And so we would have a problem with non-response. Um, so one way that we could do that in our study would be to uh, offer some sort of incentive. Like maybe if you answer our survey, we have snacks for you. Or maybe uh, your math teacher will give you extra credit for answering these survey questions. So I do have a few questions that I'm going to ask you. So make sure you watch all the way to the end. Um, make sure that if you have any questions that came up throughout this lesson, you write them down and you ask them in class so that we can have a discussion.